Welcome to IEMLF channel for another Red Shadow Legends video guide. Today there's a special event going on. Let's take a look at the news. Triple event rush for a short time only from September 28th to September 30th. We are launching three simultaneous events, a guaranteed champion event, an extra legendary event, and an enabling super raids to give you the best shot at getting some of the raids most powerful champions and artifacts. So basically, the first two events allows you to get the champions, while the super raid event allows you to farm twice the speed for artifacts. So here are the events. For the guaranteed champion event, by summoning champions using forge shards while the guaranteed champion event is active, you'll be guaranteed to get cool heart by your seven shot. That is simple. So if you don't have cool heart, this is a great opportunity for you. To get Kohat to speedrun the Spider's Den and Finite's Castle Dungeon. If you have uh, one Kohat already, you can get your second Kohat through this uh, guaranteed, sum, uh, guaranteed Champion event. For the Extra Legendary event, it's basically if you happen to summon a secret, uh, uh, summon a Legendary Champion from your secret shot, you get a, a different one, extra one from the shot for free, without costing you any silver. For the super raids, basically it's the double rewards in your dungeon runs which cost twice the amount of energy so it basically cuts the time down using one raid but double the energy cost So let's take a look at the Kohart She is in Dark Elves faction In the rare category, and this is Kohart It looks quite amazing with the purple team. So basically, Kohat is famous for her Heart Seeker, which deals a high amount of damage based on the enemy max HP, and it also decreases the 10 meter by 100%. So it allows you to deal high amount of damage to the bosses as well as to crowd control them. This is especially useful in Spider Stand and Finance ca uh, Castle. For A1 skill, Flurry of Arrows, which attacks four times at random, this one is great for Finite because it can quickly Reduce the boss shoot counter. And finally, for this one, this one is not so useful, but it's great for clearing up the wave in Finite as well as the Spider Stand. For this uh, special occasion, I'll show you how to build a speedrun team using two cohorts for Spider Stand Stage 20. You can use uh, this same build for the remaining stages as well. So let's take a look on how I build this team. This team comprises of Renegade, the lead position, followed by Armina, my AoE Decreased Defense Champion. The third champion in the team is Miscreated Monster, to tank the to provide shield buff to my allies so they can tank the damage from Spider Links and as well as the Spider Boss. And finally, we have two cohorts to deal damage and crowd control the boss. So what's the role of Renegade here? She's here to perform with a decreased skill cooldown on all allies by two turns so they can use their ultimate skill again once Renegade resets their skills. You do not need to you do not need to have her to be level 60 and equip her with anything. For Armina, her role here is to apply the AoE decreased events, debuff on all enemies. I have her fully booked to increase her chances to 100% to land those uh, decreased defense debuff as and decreases the skill cooldown to 3 turns. For miscreated monster, I have him here to apply the shield buff on all allies and also stun the spiderlings to reduce the damage dealt by the spider uh, spiderling as well. And finally, we have the cohorts, which is here to deal high amount of damage using heart seeker and crowd control the boss with the decreased 10 meter. So that's the juice of it. Now let me walk you through the champion's artifacts and masteries. Alright, this is the first champion in the team, Renegade. I have her rank to rank 3, as uh, fully ascended to 3 ranks. You do not need to have any artifacts on her. You do not need to have her book at all. You only need to uh, you need uh, renegade to just reset the ally skill cooldown one time, 
and you do not need to have any masteries on her. So this uh, build is quite simple. So during your void shot summoning, if you happen to get Renegade, you can easily build this team. The second champion on the team is Armina. Her role is to apply the decreased uh, defense debuff on all enemies. I have her equipped in Perception and Cruel set. Here are her total stats. The stats to prioritize on her will be Accuracy and Speed. If you have better gears, you can focus her to boost her damage output by having more critical rate, critical damage and attack. But for early to mid game players, you want to focus on Accuracy, Speed and HP. HP is the health points for her to survive the enemy attacks. You will need around 225 accuracy to land the debuff on stage 20 spider then. And you need a high amount of speed to go first before miscreated monster comes in. So he can so the miscreated monster is able to deal high, high amount of damage to generate a larger shield. To calculate the number of accuracy required for the dungeons, not just spider, is to multiply the uh, floors by eleven. So assuming you have uh you're you're in floor ten, you ten multiplied by eleven will be hundred and ten accuracy. So for stage twenty, twenty multiplied by eleven is around two hundred twenty accuracy required. So that's an easy way to figure out how much accuracy you need for each floor. So let's uh go through the artifacts equipped on Armina. So this is a weapon. I prioritize the accuracy, speed, and HP. This is the helmet. Speed, critical rate, defense, and HP. This is the shield. Speed, critical rate, HP, and defense. Critical rate glove. With a lot of speed, HP, and critical damage. Attack chest plate. With some speed, critical damage, and accuracy. And speed boots. With some accuracy and critical rate. This is the attack ring. Defense amulet and accuracy banner. If you do not have an accuracy banner, Alternatively, you can equip Armina or your Decreased Defense Champion with an Accuracy Chestplate. And equip her with an Accuracy set to boost her, uh, her Accuracy stats. So this is her skills. The most important is to have your Decreased Defense Champion to place a 100% chance for the Decreased Defense. And at least a 3 turn skill cooldown to make it effective. Here are her masteries. I selected offense and support mastery tree. The most important mastery for offense would be to increase her damage output using deadly precision for more critical rate, in strike for more critical damage, single out to deal more damage for against uh, enemies with HP below 40%, bring it down to inflict 6% more damage against uh, enemies with higher HP than her, methodical for more damage on her default attack. And finally, War Master to deal damage based on the enemy's max HP. For the support tree, you want to focus on getting as much accuracy as possible. So I go for Pinpoint Accuracy, Charge Focus, Form Smiter, Law of Steel to boost her artifacts base stats, such as the Perception set for more accuracy stat. And this mastery is important if I to decrease the 10 meter of the boss on her default attack. And finally, Master Hexer to increase the debuff duration. So this one is useful for her uh, decreased defense debuff. The third champion on team is Miscreated Monster. I have him equipped in 2 Immortal set and 1 Divine Life set to boost his HP. And here his total stats. The stats of prioritize on him will be health. Speed, critical rate, critical damage, and accuracy. If you don't have a great amount of uh, artifacts, the stats to prioritize would be accuracy, speed, and critical rate, and HP. So that he can deal high amount of damage to generate a larger shield. And you need around 225 accuracy to land the stun debuff on the spider links. Here is his artifacts. This is the weapon. I focus on HP and critical rate and accuracy. This is the helmet, shield, great gl uh, glove, HP chest plate, it boots, HP ring, 
HP AMOLED and Accuracy Banner. For the skills, I max out his Lightning Storm A2 skill, so it has a 310 skill cooldown to quickly put up the shield buff on all allies to protect them. And also, quickly to apply the stun debuff on the Spiderlings. Right. So for his masteries, I would recommend you to get offense and support similar to Armina to focus on the War Master, Methodical, Bring It Down, Single Out, Keen Strike, and Daily Precision. Uh, for this uh, Master Tree, I selected Eager Eye because, uh, because I was uh, testing him out in Faction Wars and Doom Tower Heart content. For the support, I would recommend you to get the Shield Bearer, Swarm Smiter, Law of Steel, Evil Eye, and Sniper. The, the one that I recommended is uh, great for speed tuning, engine speedrun team, so it doesn't have a lot of RNG. If you're, if you're not speed tuning the team, then you can go for Rapid Response and Arcane Celerity because this will boost his turn meter and might mess up the sequence of the team. So for a speed tune team, I would recommend them to go for Pinpoint, Shield Bearer, Swarm Smiter, maybe like Charge of Focus for the stun, Power of Steel, Evil Eye, and Sniper. Now finally, we have reached the cohort. This is the first cohort that I built. So I have her equipped in Perception Shed to boost her accuracy stats and also her speed stat. These are her total stats. The stats to prioritize on her will be speed, accuracy, critical damage, and some critical rate. You will only need 70% critical rate for her heart seeker to deal high amount of damage because the skill already has an extra 30% chance of inflicting a, crit a critical hit and you need uh, at least 225 accuracy to land the decreased meter and as much uh, critical damage as possible to boost her heart seeker damage skill the reason I build her with 100% critical rate is to use her in the Finite Castle, uh, Finite Castle Stage 20 as a damage dealer. So to reiterate, you will need a high, uh, high amount of accuracy, at least 225, as much as possible critical damage, at least 70% critical rate, and 200 plus speed, so she can go twice the turn of the enemy turn. And the cohort must be the fastest, so that they can go first, Followed by Armina, then Miscreated Monster, so they can help summon the the spider links when the turn when the battle starts. If you have excellent gear, you can focus on these stats, HP, so they can tank more damage, speed, critical rate, critical damage, and accuracy. So here are the artifacts. This is the weapon. I prioritize on critical rate, critical damage, speed, and accuracy. This is a very very good uh, weapon. This is the helmet, shield, critical damage glove, attack chest plate, speed boots, HP ring for more survivability, critical damage amulet, and accuracy banner. If you do not have an accuracy banner, what I will recommend is to get a accuracy chest plate instead and boost it up with a two accuracy set or two perception set. So these are her skills, Flurry of Arrows, Out of Pain, and Hasika. You'll need this skill to be maxed out so she can deal high amount of damage. Once this skill is uh, fully maxed out, she'll deal extra 30% damage from this skill with a 4 turn skill cooldown. These are her masteries. The uh, masteries to focus for Kohat to deal high amount of damage will be getting Flawless Execution. For additional 20% critical damage, do not go for Helm Smasher because you will be more RNG and it does not make the run consistent. And I use Split Shield to unlock Flawless Execution. Shield Streak is the, the sort matter for Spider Dan, it's great for Finite Castle. Bring it down for more damage. Figure out for more damage as well. Out of Glory for more damage and 
they will not get much damage from spiderlings because they will have the shield buff protecting them. And finally, these two. Elite position for more critical rate and key strike for 10% critical damage. For, for Life Drinker, it's amazing for Kohat because whenever they perform a Heartseeker attack on the boss, it will fully heal their, their HP. Because the Heartseeker damage deals by like 100,000 and above. For support tree, I recommend to get pinpoint accuracy for more for ten additional accuracy stat. Exalt in death to heal them if whenever the allies kill the enemy. Great for Fire Knight's castle. Swarm Sweater for additional 16 uh, accuracy. Four for each enemy alive. Door of Steel to boost the artifacts uh, sets stats. Evil Eye to decrease the 10 meter on the default attack, and finally, Staxa to increase the debuff duration for their healing reduction, poison, and a decreased accuracy, which is great for Fire Knight Castle. This build is similar to my second cohort, just that the artifacts will be slightly different. So, the second cohort, I build her in critical damage set and speed set for additional critical damage and speed. Here are her total stats. It's similar to the first cohort that prioritizes on critical rate, critical damage, accuracy, and speed. So here are the artifacts. This is the weapon. I prioritize on speed, critical rate, and critical damage. This is the helmet. As you notice, I have like multiple rows on critical rate. If you get this, you should keep this for your cohort. Because if you've got multiple rows on critical rate, you can have her equipped in critical damage glove. Which is much more easier to build a high damaging cold heart in your team. And this is the shield. Critical, uh, critical damage glove. Attack chest plate. As usual, if you don't have an accuracy banner, you can replace this uh, with an accuracy chest plate. Uh, speed boots. Always speed. HP ring. Critical damage amulet. And accuracy banner. So the skills will be the same as well. Use your rare skill tomes to max out this hard seeker skill. And the masteries are here, which is the same. So for this particular team, you do not need any team AI preset. You just need to speed tune them to go in a certain order. The speed tuning here is to have these two cohorts to go first, followed by Armina, this created monster. And their speed must be over 200. So they can go twice of Renegade speed. So once they perform their action twice, that Renegade will come in to reset the skill cooldown of all allies. Then they will repeat the same action again for the following attack. I will show you in manual mode, one time speed, to explain how they work. Alright, so now at the first turn, the spider boss summons 8 spiderlings as you notice. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the reason why I have the cohort to go first is to allow the boss to summon the maximum of 10 spiderlings first. With the default AI, the cohort will use their Art of Pain. This is the first cohort. And you notice the second cohort summons uh, helps to summon the next two spiderlings out of a total of 10 spiderlings here. So the second cohort will do the Art of Pain again. And now Armina will come in with her A2 skill to apply the AOE decrease defense. And now with the decrease defense on all on all enemies, this created monster will come in with his uh, A2 skill, Lightning Storm, to deal damage to all enemies and generate a shield based on his uh, damage inflicted. So if without this decrease defense, the shield will be quite small. Now with the decrease defense on, you can notice that the shield is quite big. The reason why the spiderlings attack uh, Renegade is because she has the least amount of uh, HP here. So the cohort will now perform the Heart Seeker skill to reduce the third meter of the boss. There is a chance where the boss will resist it, a 3% chance. This is the second cohort, fully de uh, 
uh, depletes the ten meter by hundred percent. And now finally, when the gate will come in to perform a sacrificial ritual, it doesn't matter now because she already performed her role to, to decrease the skill cooldown of all allies. Now miscreated monster will come in with his uh, into skill. So Kohat will repeat their Art of Pain, then come back again with their Heartseeker. And that's it. So basically, Redigate here it, uh, allows the champions to perform the ultimate skill by reducing their skill cooldown by 2. So let me show you a replay of this uh, team in 2 time mode, full auto. So both cohort will perform the A2 skill out of pain. Now there are 10 spiderlings on the battlefield. This creator monster comes in with his shield, shield attack. First hard seeker, second hard seeker in. Now the champions repeat the attack again after Renegade applies the reset the reduce skill cooldown by two turns. That's why it's important to have your champions with three turns skill cooldown so they can apply their, their ultimate skill quickly. So there you have it. This run takes less than 40 seconds to complete per run. There's a chance where the both cohorts Will, their, their heart seekers will be resisted for their decrystal meter, but you do not need to worry about it because Miscreator Monster Shields will be there to protect them. So the worst, the, the worst case scenario for the run will be is it will take around 1 minute and 20 seconds for the run to complete with a 100% success rate. You can replace uh, Armina with another decreased defense champion if you do not have her, as well as Miscreator Monster. If you have a better tanker to protect all of these uh, squishy champions here, maybe like a AOE provoker or something like that. But if you are using an AOE provoker, they might they might not be able to survive the boss attack. So probably you could have a uh, maybe you could use Helio, one of the legendary champion from Benelots if you have him. Yep, this guy. So this guy. As a similar skill kit like Miscreated Monster, where he attacks all enemies, places shield buff on all allies for 2 turns equal to 20% of the damage inflicted. If you have him equipped in Savage Set and Crow Set, he'll be able to deal more damage and generate a larger shield like Miscreated Monster as well. The other champion I can think of to produce to generate a large shield would be Sir Nicholas. He's a Void Legendary Champion. He has a A2 skill Polar Protection, which attacks all enemies, places a shield buff on all allies for 2 turns. The value of the shield is equal to 30% of the damage inflicted, which is a better version of Helier and Miscreated Monster. The good thing is he also can place Unkillable and continuous shield buff to heal all allies. If you have not uh, visited my website, ayumilove.net, you can head over there. Once you are at the website, you can click on this Red Shadow Legends page. Then scroll to the Shadow uh, Red Shadow Legends Index for the skill section. Click on the Decrease Defense skill. It's uh, under the debuff section. Is this one. Click on it. So in this page, I have listed all of the champions in the game, over 600 champions, and I filtered that now based on their skill list. So currently, I have them uh, categorized in 60% uh, decreased defense AOE, 60% decreased defense target, 60% decreased random, and also the mini version of the decreased defense, which is 30%. That's a 30% decreased defense AOE. 30% decreased defense target, 
and random. So this is an easy way for you to identify which champions you can use for your uh, AOE dec decrease defense champion for your team. So they are also subcategorized by their rarity, like legendary champions. There are over like 17 champions here, and epic. There are over like four. There are 14 epic champions, and finally there are three rares. So currently, I was showcasing you Armina as one of the epic champions to apply the AOE decrease defense. There are a lot more of champions you can use if you do not have Armina. So you can use this list to help build your speedrun team. And also you can go over to the, the skills section to find out more of all the champions in the game. Alright, uh, that's it for the speedrun team for Spider Stand 20. If you, could, you have uh, any question regarding the team, you can post your questions below in the comment section of this video. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button. And if you have not subscribed yet, you can click on the subscribe button, it's free. And click on the notification bell to receive new updates whenever I upload a video to this channel. Uh, that's it folks. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.